Welcome back to the 2006 Singular ESPN All-America Show. Once again, your host, Regis Philbin. You want to talk about traditions in college football? Here's one for you. The Football Writers Association of America has published their All-America team every year without fail since 1944. In 1957, the team included a running back from the University of Virginia named Jamshid Bakhtiar. Jim, as his friends call him, has led that rare life, experiencing both the very best and the very worst of human nature. And through it all, he has dedicated himself to easing the pain and suffering of others, often at great risk to himself and his family. With courage and compassion, he has embodied the very essence of what it means to be an All-American. And as this year's winner of the FWAA Alumni Award, In 1946, a 12-year-old boy named Jamshid Bakhtiar left his father and his home in Iran. He traveled across the world to pursue an education in America. Everything was new, nothing familiar. But in this foreign place, through a foreign game, he found a way to belong. Whatever alienation that I must have felt at that time, sports then took the place of a lot of things for me. Was a way of acceptance in the American culture when I didn't know how to speak English very well. And that became a, a kind of like a family for me. Football also became the key that opened a world of educational opportunities. The University of Virginia gave back to our football scholarship where, as a running back, he tore up the record books, winning All-America honors in 1957. Affectionately known as the Persian Prince, Jim relished the family atmosphere within his team. Everybody liked Jim, so everybody was asking Jim when they had a break at the university to go home. So Jim didn't have one home to go to. He had maybe 40 different homes. We always had football players on Sunday morning for breakfast after church, and Jim was one of those guys. But then Jim became very special to our family and was there every Sunday morning. Bakhtiar graduated from UVA Medical School with a degree in psychiatry. Despite his love for Charlottesville and its people, Jim understood the impact his education could have in Iran. In 1974, Jim and his young family moved to Iran, where he created the country's first modern psychiatric unit. Jim taught students and colleagues to treat mental illness as a medical condition, rather than a social stigma. Jim's clinical advances were cut short after only two years when the Islamic Revolution exploded around the Bakhtiar family. There was a pretty drastic change. I mean, there was people rioting in the streets. There was, and I didn't really understand it. And there were just people getting shot and people shooting back and tanks running over people. And, you know, it was, it was chaotic. The Bakhtiar situation grew more grave when Iran was attacked by Iraq in 1980. Thousands of Iranian boys were sent into battle. I was, you know, nearing the age where I would have gone to the army, and they had suicide waves of, you know, 16 to 18 year old Iranians just you know, strapping bombs to their waists and laying them down in front of tanks. So I think that certainly played a part in dad's decision making and trying to get out of there. Bakhtiar was working to get his family out of Iran, but those plans were interrupted by a chilling midnight raid. About two o'clock in the morning, group, I heard some glasses break and somebody broke through the house and about 10 of these uh, revolutionary guards came in uh, to our bedroom and then they said, the doctor, just come with us. They were executing people from his cell. You know, I'm extremely close to dad and it's a feeling of helplessness and you can't do anything and you just look at somebody that you, you know, admire and they're, you can tell that they're miserable and scared. After three months of interrogations and terror, Bakhtiar was released from prison. He told no one, not even his family, what he would do next. I woke him up at five o'clock in the morning and I said, we're going on vacation. We didn't pack anything. We just jumped in a car and started driving. And I don't know at what point they suspected that we were leaving, but we got 
to where we needed to go and got into a little town and then transferred over to a to another to a jeep it was getting dark and all of a sudden there was four horsemen just kind of running alongside the jeep we jumped on the horses and they said you know let's go to stay out of sight the back drs crossed the mountains at night and during the day hid in a cave on the third morning they crossed the border into turkey and disappeared into the urban sprawl of istanbul back tr was free but the family had escaped with only the clothes on their backs at his time of greatest need Jim turned to the people who had become his family 20 years before. I had to maintain contact with the people in Charlottesville, so we had lots of friends. People were thrilled that Jim was coming home. When you get together, uh, no matter how long it's been, you take right up where you left off. There just wasn't any hesitation at all, and, and uh, it was kind of a really a community effort. Dad has got a lot of pride, and he's not like he likes taking things from anybody. But at that point in time, he, we had to get established again. And so one of his friends owned a car dealership and gave him a car, and one of his other friends owned a development company, and they pretty much just gave him a townhouse. I mean, there's not many people that you're just going to give a house to, you know, and, and they did it with, with pleasure. His return to Virginia gave Jim a new opportunity to pursue his life's work. At age 72, Jim Bakhtiar spent 70 hours each week devoting himself to the care of others. Jim Bakhtiar has led a remarkable life, a life that has always been nourished by a basic truth. He can take comfort from those he loves and give comfort to those in need. As long as you keep giving energy, that's the message. You don't have to always be in, in, in the same place. I, New York needs energy. Chicago needs energy. Iran needs energy. Wherever you are, it needs the kind of energy that has to do with helping people to understand themselves and, uh, and if they have a particular illness, to be able to treat it and help them. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2006 FWAA Alumni Award recipient, Dr. Jim Bakhtiar. Thank you so much. Thank you. I hope that all of you out there who are all Americans, you can stand up somewhere here 50 years from now and look back and say, aha, uh -huh, what a journey I've been, and fill up those chapters of your books, because you've got a lot of chapters, basically, to, uh, to, to unfold. Thank you so much. It's been a wonderful experience, wonderful journey. Coming up. The 2006 All-America Offense. 